reading this morning is coming from John the 17th chapter beginning at the 20th verse the prayer for the church neither pray I for thee alone but for them also which shall believe on me through thy word that they all may be one as though Father art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love with, with me thou hast loved me may, in, may be in them, and I in them. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers of his words. Our Father in heaven this morning, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We come saying thank you, Lord, for this day's journey. Oh, God, you've really been good to us down here, and we just want to say thank you for the blessing that you have bestowed upon us. Oh, God, we're living in troubled times, and we're asking thee to walk with us each day of our life. 
And God, we just thank you in the name of Jesus this morning that you have been so good and kind to us. But we are, we got, we are your children, and we haven't kept commandment as we ought. But Lord, you saw fit that our moments of opportunity roll on just a little further. And Holy Father, we just want to say thank you this morning as we come to lift up your holy and everlasting name. Because, Lord, we, we know that your name must be lifted up. And if you're going to draw all men unto you, you, we must lift up your name. And Holy Father, as we sing praises unto your holy and everlasting name this morning, we ask indeed to turn and listen here this way and hear our humble cry. Because, Lord, we know that you're not so far away that you can't hear and answer our cry this morning. We come crying out to you this morning because, Lord, we just need you this morning. Because, Lord, we need you better today than we did yesterday. Because, Lord, Satan is busy down here. And, Holy Father, we ask indeed to look on us this morning as we sing praises unto your holy and everlasting name. Holy Father, we just want to thank you for the blessing that every blessing that you have sent our way. Holy Father, we just thank you for Jesus who died that we could have right to eternal life. We want to thank you, Jesus, for dying on Calvary Cross. Holy Father, we know that you, you didn't have to do it, but because of love, yeah. that you gave your holy life, that you, we could have right to eternal life. Wow. And Holy Father, we just thank you this morning for allowing us this privilege this morning to stand between these four walls and to call on you and thank you for what you've done for us. Yeah. Because, you, because Jesus lived, we can face tomorrow. Yeah. Holy Father, we know that tomorrow is not promised to us, but uh. Lord, if we see tomorrow, it will be because of you. And Holy Father, we just thank you, Jesus, for the, allowing us this chance this morning. Thank you for this church and its board of members. We thank you for every home that is present this morning. We just thank you for allowing us to have our health and strength. We just thank you for every pastor that's going to preach and teach your word this morning, declaring your word between the living and the dead. And Holy Father, we ask indeed this morning to touch us this morning with that finger of love. Draw us closer together. Give us more love. Put more love into our hearts. And give us a better understanding how to get along with each other. Holy Father, we need you down here. We just don't know how bad we need you. But Holy Father, we need you this morning, right now. In the name of Jesus, we call you right now because, Lord, we know that you are able. We want to turn all our, all our burdens over to you this morning. Because you have been our burden bearer all the days of our lives. And Holy Father, we just thank you this morning for allowing us to assemble ourselves together. And we pray thee that thou would bless those that are sick this morning. We know that you got sick children all over this entire universe of yours. Holy Father, look on those that are sick this morning. We know you know all about their pain and suffering. You know what they're going through. And Holy Father, we know that you're able. We know that all sickness is not unto death. But Holy Father, we know that one day this life will end. And we will spend eternity with you in glory. Holy Father, we don't know when it's coming, but Lord, we know it's coming. And Holy Father, get us ready. We got to stay ready, Holy Father. We got to stay prepared to leave here any time. And Holy Father, we just thank you for our assembly here this morning. Oh God, this is our servant's prayer. Amen.
portion of today's service is where you can participate remotely. It's now time for tithes and offerings. Here at Mount Calm during this COVID-19 pandemic, we have several ways for you to donate. You can donate electronically via Cash App by entering our Cash App tag to dollar sign Mount Calm Church. You can send your offering via mail to P.O. Box 376 Coldwater, Mississippi 38618 or in person Sundays at Mount Calm Church from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. If you're una unable to do one of the following listed or feel unsafe leaving the comfort of your home, please reach out to us and a brother of our deacon board will contact you. Come on, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Come on, lift your voice and come on, say hallelujah. What the highest praise? Hallelujah. Here we go. One, two, one.
can handle it. He can handle it. That's a fact. I'll put it on. I'll put it all in his hands. He can handle it. He can handle it. That's a fact. He can handle it. He can handle it. That's a fact. He can handle it. Continue to strengthen us as we take this journey along Christian's walk, Father God. We thank you for all that you've done for us. Father, now it's time to us to hear the word from you. So we ask you to hide me behind the desk. Let others be able to see and hear a word that you have for them. Father God, let the word that comes out of my mouth be an encouragement to everybody, not a discouragement, Father God. We hope that it helps someone along their Christian walk. Be able to help them and guide them on the way uh, they are trying to go. These are the blessings that we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning again. Thank you all so much for tuning in to our service today. We thank you all so much for continuing to watch us week after week. Uh, you just don't know how appreciative we are for the things that you are doing. It's because of you uh, that we are here today because you would like to hear uh, what the Lord has for us or for you. So we give it to you in praise and songs and instruments and, and the preached gospel words. So again, thank you so much for tuning in to us week after week. Just for a few minutes, if we can, we can go to today's scriptures going from 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6. Uh, going to give you some highlights around the whole chapter. Of chapter 6. So I'm only going to read one verse, uh, one verse that I want you all to see, but we're going to highlight all the rest of the verses as well. But I just want you all to see this one verse. So we're going to get to verse 14. In first, second Samuel chapter 6, verse 14. The same thing that's in my book is in your book, is in your Bible, is in your iPads, in your iPhone, if you hadn't deleted it or torn it out. Verse 14 says, and David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with a linen of fire. Again, it says, David danced before the Lord with all his might. Just for a few minutes, I want to tag this text and tell you all uh, with a thesis statement. Do your dance. Do your dance. Y'all know that preaching and amen, it goes together. What God has joined, let no man put us under. Again, do your dance. I know this was before uh, some of you all's time. Uh, I know it was before my time. I wasn't even thought of. But in 1971, uh, an artist, a songist by the name of Don Cornelius, started an American music dance TV program called The Soul Train. Some of y'all remember that. They used to do all kinds of dances, and you would see people getting what they call the soul train line and one by one they would go down the line doing their different dance routines and when they get to the end of the line the next person will come down the aisle back then they called it 
cutting a rug. Some of y'all still know how to cut a rug today. This was the way before all the break dancing. This was way before all the spinning on top of your heads. This is way before all the, the juking and the twerking and the TikTok and all the new stuff that we have today. But my point is, you danced because you felt happy on the inside. And whatever you wanted your body to do, it moved to that rhythm. It, isn't it strange that when we can't dance, when we get to church. I mean, you can dance to worldly things, but it's a problem to dance before the Lord. People in church don't even dance anymore. Every now and then, you will see people dancing in church because of a song they heard uh, that is touching their hearts so dearly. Maybe I need to get some club goers and get them to join the church so we can see some people dancing in the church. Uh, listen, dancing is an expression or a, of a deep feeling. It's a celebration of what's going on in your soul. It's expressing joy, expressing praise, and expressing excitement. The question is, when you are expressing joy, when you are expressing praise, who are you doing it for? I mean, who are you doing it to? When you were in the world, you would dance to the music made, or that music that you were dancing to, it made you do non-Christian things. You danced to satisfy flesh. And somehow the devil has taken over what God has intended for his glory and using it for his own celebration. I, I, I'm, in a, I'm in a mode today to try, notice I said try, to restore dancing in the hearts of God's people for his glory. I, I don't expect anyone to break out in a dance today because some people are not going to dance unless you tell them to dance. They're not going to clap their hands unless you tell them to clap their hands. But if you could just think of a good reason to praise God, I, I don't want to help you think. I want you to think on your own. I, I mean, didn't he wake you up this morning? That's a reason to dance for God. Did he close you in your right mind? That's a reason to dance for God. Did he keep you from diseases? That's a reason to dance for God. I mean, did he have a roof over your head last night? That's a reason to praise God. I wish I had some help in here that can say, I had food to eat and I had clothes on my back. That's a reason to dance for God. I mean, think about it. We think about all the things that we don't have, and we'll cry about that. Well, let's count the things that we don't have. Well, somebody can say, I don't have cancer. I don't have HIV. I don't have AIDS. I don't have heart disease. I don't have hypertension. I don't have glucose issues. If those are not enough reasons to give God a dance, I don't know what is. Let me give you a few things. And I'm going to bid you farewell. Listen, God wants us to raise our hands. He wants us to open our mouths. He wants us to dance for him. Matter of fact, it's written all over the Bible. It's written all over the Bible. You don't believe it? Listen, when you get a chance, Exodus chapter 15, verse 20, it says, y'all remember when they crossed the Red Sea? And it says, Miriam took a tambourine. Her and some of the other women took tambourines. They were banging them real loud. And then they began to dance. Yeah. Psalms verse 30. Psalms chapter 30, verse 11. It says, thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou, shall, thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. What are you saying? In other words, God is going to wipe all of your tears out of your eyes. He's going to remove whatever that is going on in your life. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I just want you to know that whatever drama is going on in your life, 
whatever pain or anxiety that you are dealing with, the scripture says God is going to wipe all of that out of your life and he's going to turn your sadness into dancing. Psalms, I kept reading, listen, I kept reading Psalms 149 verse 3. It says, let them praise him in the dance. Psalms 150 verse 4, it says, praise him with the tremble and dance. Y'all, I need some Bible readers in here. Jeremiah 31 and 4 says, again, I will build thee, and they shall build, O oh, virgin of Israel, so thou shalt again be adored with my tablets, and shall go forth with dancing. Luke 15, around verse 25, it says, when the story was about the prodigal son, prophet son went out we already know that he got rid of all his possessions that his daddy gave him but the text says well, I want you to check this out something I ain't seen and I had never highlighted before but I want you all to see this when the prodigal son came back home and the oldest son was coming back to the house here's what the scripture says in Luke 15 around verse 25 this, the oldest son was out when the young son, the younger son came in, the older son was on his way back to the house. And he, verse 25 said that he heard music and dancing. Again, verse 25 said that he heard music and he heard dancing. Third time for the charm. He, the Bible said that the oldest son, he heard music and he heard dancing. Wouldn't it be a great thing if we could have the music so loud and the people dancing all over the church so that people out in the streets and people out on the street corners can hear us in here dancing and giving God some praise. So what they're going to do is they come on the inside and see what we're dancing about. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Look, listen. Where are all the single ladies? All, all my single ladies. Y'all all, know the song, Beyond. All the single ladies. All, all the single ladies. I, I, I want y'all to read this. If y'all hadn't read nothing else or none of them scriptures I just gave you, I know y'all gonna read this one. If you go to Judges chapter 21, when you get down to about verse 23, but read the whole chapter, but when you get down to about verse 23, it says that the girls of Shiloh uh -huh. came out to dance uh -huh. and the men from Benjamin came and took them as wives. Y'all may need to do some more dancing if you're a single lady. Whatever the dance is to get you a man or get you a husband, the text says you should dance to get you a man. But those that don't want to dance, I understand, you don't want to get married. But the text says that they danced and then the men saw them dancing and they said, well, let me pick this one right here. Let me pick that one right there. Let me pick that one right there. And I want her to be my wife. I believe. We may have more single ladies dancing after today's message is over. Throughout all the scripture, dancing is expected, but it's done very less in the church. Dancing is a form of praising God. That's my, that's my introduction. Y'all give me a few more minutes and I'll be finished. Do y'all have the time? I won't waste your time if you don't have the time. Y'all got the time? Uh -huh. King David danced before God. Verse 14, it said, David danced before the Lord with all his might. He danced with all his might. Uh -huh. I get it. If God hadn't done anything for you, I, that's fine. You don't have to dance. I understand he had never stopped by your house. He had never healed you from any sickness that you're dealing with. He has never comforted you at night when you couldn't sleep. I understand you have no reason to dance. But some people that come to church, I understand they act like they can't clap their hands. They act like they can't raise their hands. They act like they're going to die if they raise their hands. They act like the Lord is going to call them home if they say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I mean, people are so stiff. When they come to church, they don't want to.
want to praise God, but didn't God wake you up this morning? You didn't wake yourself up. Then that's fine. If he didn't wake you up, that's fine. Sit where you are. But I need to find somebody that know that God woke them up. And if you understand all the stuff that I done been through, that he done brought me through, you ought to be able to give God some praise. I, I understand. I understand you may not be feeling well. That's good. I understand. But you don't feel bad all the time. Every day, week after week. You, you shouldn't use the excuse that I feel bad. If David, the king, can praise God with all of his might, then you should be able to raise your hand or clap your hands or say hallelujah every now and then. Listen, listen. The word dance is a Hebrew, or in the Hebrew language means whirl about. So what are you saying, Pastor? You, so you don't even have to break it all the way down. You don't have to do it all the way down. All you have to do is just spin around. All you have to do is just spin around. The word dance in Hebrew means whirl about. So all you're doing is just spinning around. Here's the question. What caused David to dance? I know somebody wanted to know what caused David to dance. What was happening, the reason why David danced? Let me show you what happened. The Ark of the Covenant God had moved it in God's, God had moved it in David's heart to get the Ark of the, Ark of the Covenant and put it back in the city of David. Right. Bring back to where it belongs. Now you remember the Ark of the Covenant, it contained those precious, valuable assets of God. The tablets that Moses brought down that God had written on, it was a sacred Peace for them. That Ark of Covenant was a sacred peace for them. So he had, or he was going to go get it. And he went to go get the Ark of the Covenant, and he went to bring it back. So David went and got the Ark of the Covenant. Once he got the Ark of the Covenant, he put it on a cart. The text says he put it on a cart, and he was on his way back. And then the cart started to tilt. And one of the soldiers reached and grabbed the ark so it wouldn't fall and kept it from falling. But it caused him his life. God got angry at the man and instantly he died. David got all upset and mad because they were trying to bring the ark back to the city of David. And one of his soldiers that he thought was a good man and then wasn't doing nothing wrong, but he tried to grab the ark before it fell. But he ended up dying because God got mad on David, was so worried and so fearful. Text says that from what happened, what David did was he took the ark into the home of Obadiah. And David went on home without the ark. Then the Bible says that he had realized that he made a mistake. He had not carried the ark the way the scripture commanded it to be carried. It wasn't to be carried on a cart. It was to be carried on poles. It wasn't to be carried by soldiers. It was to be carried by priests. I want to tell somebody that's listening to us or listening to me right now that God, and if you want God's favor on your life then you have to follow God's specific instructions that he gives to you. Things go right in your life when you obey God and follow his instructions the way he gave them to you. Go, go on and preach pastor. I am. I'm doing the best I can with what I got. What, what caused David to dance? I know you asked the question. Listen. The first thing that causes David to dance is that God gave David another chance. The, the reason why David danced, I'm telling you, number one, God gave David another opportunity. 
Look, we all should be in hell right now. Let let me say that again. We all should be in hell right now. I, I mean, we could have died in the midst of our sins, but aren't you glad that he gave you another not a second chance, but he gave you three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thousand, two thousand. All these chances he gave you, we ought to be glad that we're not sitting in hell right now. He gave us another chance to get it together. David danced because God gave him another chance. Chance and if somebody listening to me this morning ought to dance right now because you are you you could have had all these sicknesses, you could have had all these bad diseases, you could have had gonorrhea, you could have all these folks that you don't slept with, you could have caught a deadly disease, you could have caught everything under the sun, but God gave you another chance. Second thing I want you all to see, the reason why David danced is because he learned from his mistakes. He learned that he should not carry the Ark of Covenant on a cart. He needed, he needed it to be on poles, and he needed it to be carried by a priest. Everything that we experience in life, God allows us to go through things Just for us to learn the lesson. Uh Some of us keep repeating the grade Uh over and over because we hadn't learned the lesson. So we got to be able to learn the lesson in order to get out of the grade. It's it's nobody's fault that you keep failing the grade but yourself. Come closer. What I want you to know is learn the lesson. Number three, and I'm moving, listen, look at verse 13. The third thing I want you all to see, look at verse 13. Verse 13 says, and it was so that when they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces. In other words, they made six steps. I want you all to know that number three, I want you all to understand that he learned how to celebrate small advances. Verse 6, I'm telling you, verse 13, 6 is the number of incompletion. 7 is a number of completion. He only went 6 steps, meaning he got to where it should, or he hadn't got to where he should be yet because he needed to make another step. So in other words, Even though I haven't gotten where God want me to be in life, you ought to be happy that you only got one more step to make for God to get you where you want to be in life. And I understand that you ain't got where you want to be in life. You still got some things going on in your life, but you ought to thank God that you headed in the right direction because if you make one step, I know God will make two. So you ought to thank God that you almost died. Hold on, wait, wait, listen. I know why some of y'all that listened to us this morning hadn't got up out of your seat hadn't ran around the living room, you hadn't said hallelujah, thank you Jesus, you hadn't said go ahead preach boy. I know why y'all hadn't danced when you should have danced because the Lord has brought you from a mighty long way. He's done things for you that you thought you couldn't do. Hold on, wait. I know why you have not danced. See, some of y'all don't dance because watch this. It's right here in verse uh, 16. I want y'all to look at what I'm looking at. Verse 16. This is why some of y'all hadn't danced. Or when you come to church, you look like a a bump on a log. Or you look like you've been sucking lemons. Watch this. I'm going to tell you why you do that. Look at verse 16. Verse 16 says, And as the ark of the Lord came unto the city of David, the text says that Michal, Saul's daughter, which is David's wife, looked through a window 
and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. So, some people, or some of y'all, don't dance because you are concerned about somebody else's opinion or what they're going to say about you when you do dance in church. I, I wish I had a church, a full church. I don't even have to have a full church. If I can get about two or three people in here that, and they can ask the question or I can ask the question to them and I would say, is there anybody else in here other than me that said, I don't care what you got to say. I don't give a hell rude beans or what you got to say about me when I feel like dancing and giving God some praise because I know how far he's brought me from. I can dance, dance, dance all night. Wait, wait, wait. Look at verse 20. Wait, look at verse 20 and then I'm done. Look, look, look at verse 20 and then I'm done. Listen, verse 20 says, then David returned to bless the household. When David returned to bless the household and Michal, the daughter of Saul, which is his wife, came out to meet him and said, how glorious was the king of Israel today who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handsmaid and of his servants and one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. See, David danced until he danced out of his clothes. I, I didn't get to that point because I'm almost done. So I'm going to just say this. Since David danced out of his clothes. I, I didn't even bring that up earlier today. But I just want you to know that David danced until he danced out of his clothes. In other words, he was whirling around until he came out of his clothes. And, 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 and I don't even bring that up today. So when David comes home, he expected some type of encouragement from his wife, but instead she ridiculed him. You don't believe me? Look at verse 21. Verse 21 says, and David said unto Michal, he said, it wasn't for you. I danced for the Lord. In other words, I wasn't dancing to please you. And I want to tell other folks, don't dance to please somebody else. We ought to be able to do our dance so we can praise and worship the Lord. Doesn't matter who watching you and who trying to say you didn't cut this rug right and you didn't you didn't throw this leg up right and you didn't wave this hand right because I'm dancing for the Lord. I don't care if you like me or not. And I get tired of folks telling you that it don't take all that when you get to church. But let me tell you something. You don't know the hell that I've been through. So when I get out of whatever I've been through, if I want to give God some praise for whatever I've been through, move out of my way because I'm going to give him some praise. Hallelujah. Watch this, watch this, watch this, and I'm leaving. Listen, verse 21, listen, and I'm leaving, listen. When we keep on reading verse 21, verse 21 tells us that he says, Jesus or God chose me. Watch this now. He says, which chose me before thy father. In other words, David told his own wife, that God chose me instead of your dad. In other words, because Saul was the king, David said, no, wait a minute. God chose me instead of your family. So all I'm trying to say is, when favor of God is on you, it does not matter what people say. We got to be able to give God praise no matter what people say. I know somebody tell you, be quiet, don't wave your hand. I know somebody tell you, sit down, you ain't got to do your dance. But I tell you, do your dance because you know what the Lord has in store for you. Verse 22, and I'm sitting down, listen. Verse 22 says, and I will let ye be more vile than us. And will be based in mine own spirit and of the man servants which thou hast spoken of, and them shall and them shall be I made in honor. So in other words, 
What David is trying to tell his wife, but she told him it don't take all of that. And he just told her that God chose me other than your daddy. What David is trying to tell her, you thought I was dancing this time. Just wait till next time because I'm going to go crazy because when I figure out that Jesus, my master, has died for me, I'm going to go crazy every time I get. I wish I had a few people in here that know that God has made a way for them. He brought them out of darkness. He brought them into the marvelous light. So it does not matter what your neighbor is saying beside you. You got to be able to give God a holy death because of what he does for you. So, David said, I got to do my dance. Because I understand what the Lord has in store for me. So does anybody here know that God has really been good to them? I mean, he's been better to you than you've been to yourself. I mean, he put clothes on your back when you didn't have clothes. And some people worried about food to eat. But look at it. He can put food in your refrigerator when you don't have food to eat. He can have canned goods in the pantry when you can't go to the grocery store. All you got to do is look with what you got because I know God has been good to you. God is a good God. He's been better to us than he ever been to ourselves. I want to thank y'all so much for joining in with us this morning for all the things that we've been through these last two months. Thank you again for being strong. I understand that people all over the world, they dance for many different things and many different reasons. But don't let nobody steal your joy. When you want to give God some praise, don't worry about who's watching you. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Don't worry about somebody saying, well, you ain't dancing right. Them be the main one that don't even want to say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Because they woke up this morning and thought they did it themselves. They got food on the table and they thought they did it themselves. But they got to realize that God gave them the health and strength to go and get that food. God gave them the health and strength and a sound mind to keep the job, to go get, the, get your check at the end of the week to go and buy your food. So you got to thank God for that. A lot of people don't want to thank God, but you got to be able to dance in the midst of your storm. Anybody here know that God is a good God? If you know that God is a good God, I want you, baby, to put your hands together just for a little while while we get ready to sing this song. Y'all don't mind, put your hands together. We gonna say this right here. Ain't God a good God? Y'all come on, put your hands together. Ain't God a good God, yeah. Ain't the God a good God? Everybody clap your Come on and put your hands together If you know that the Lord been good to you Listen Well, haven't the Lord been good yet Ain't God a good Won't the Lord heal you, yeah? Won't the Lord heal? Anybody here know won't the Lord heal? Yeah! Anybody here 
Thank you for joining us today for this live stream sermon at Mount Com Missionary Baptist Church. Mount Com Missionary Baptist Church is located at 4923 Arkabubba Road in Coldwater, Mississippi. We're just 30 minutes south of Memphis, Tennessee, and we're neighbors to DeSoto County, Mississippi, and Tunica, Mississippi. Join us for our weekly services, Sundays at 9 a.m. for Sunday school and 10 a.m. for worship service. Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. for Bible study, and every first, second, and third Sundays, we have our Jesus and Me Children's Church for our youth for ages 2 to 15. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Mount Com Church. Subscribe to our YouTube page by searching for Mount Com Church in the YouTube search bar. Visit our website at www.mountcomchurch.com. Org. If you're enjoying today's message and would like to send us a monetary donation, you can cash app us at dollar sign Mount Com Church, or you can mail us your donation to P.O. Box 376, Coldwater, Mississippi, zip code 38618. At Mount Com, we're dedicated to service after the benediction and winning souls to Christ.